When you think of the wildlife in Madagascar, you probably imagine some of the coolest animals ever, especially in the amphibian region. Like if you Google frogs of Madagascar, you're gonna come across all these fast, slender, intelligent, and sometimes even dangerous animals that are just naturally there. And it's a really neat variety of animals. And then there's this one, the tomato frog. Not as fast, maybe not as smart. On the wider end of things and not actually harmful or dangerous at all, but he's still pretty and I think worth talking about. In fact, I think that they're almost like the crested gecko of amphibians. I mean that in a good way though, because I think that it's kind of a pretty nice starter amphibian or just amphibian for anyone that doesn't wanna to have to stress over it too much. And I'll get into that side of stuff later, but first a bit more about them. Uh, there's three different species of tomato frogs in Madagascar, but they all look pretty similar. This one's actually the most dull of them, like color wise, but he's still super pretty, like way prettier than the average animal, I would say, and definitely nicer looking than any amphibian that you're gonna find in this region. He is this species in particular, I'm not gonna try and pronounce them, but they were first discovered in the 1800s in Madagascar. And now you can find them online for like 30 bucks, captive bred and plus shipping of course, but that's really not too bad. And there's a lot of animals I've talked about on the channel that I suggest that might be cool pets. And then a lot of you are like, where do I get one? Can I have yours? Like, well, <laughs> I don't know where to find them. Like say the rough green snake video I did, or smooth green, I don't know, I don't know which one, but everyone was like, well, I want one now but I can't find any. And this one is a bit better than that because I did do some quick searches and of course he'll be available eventually, but this is only one when there's gonna be more of you wanting them. The problem is there's really not too many sites that sell them, but I have seen various frogs like chubby frogs, like the one I have, tomato frogs and other things at local expos and local shops. So it will take some hunting, but in a way it's a bit more fun when it's not just, oh, I want a normal wall python. Click, here's a thousand normal wall pythons ready to ship next day. It's a bit of a hunt. And then once you find one, you are left with a pretty cool animal. The thing about frogs, especially, even though this kind of applies to many reptiles and amphibians, is they have extremely still faces. Faces. So some frogs have this like constant grumpy look, a constant sad look, maybe a constant kind of happy or pleased look, but this one just has a constantly surprised look, which is just kind of funny because it's 24-7, 365. The whole six to eight years it lives is just surprised the entire time. This one in particular is a male and they're just a bit smaller than females, but other than that, they're basically the same um, physically. And what really differs a lot from the amphibians I'm used to, like say growing up around here on the East Coast, any toad you find is gonna have a pretty big mouth and it can pretty much eat whatever insect is in the area. This one, however, has actually a very small mouth, so you do have to kind of accommodate for that. You're gonna have to feed maybe the baby insect or smaller insects instead of just throwing in any insect that you get from, well, hopefully captive bread because you shouldn't really feed wild insects because you might give them a parasite or something, but you're gonna have to feed them the smaller ones versus just anything you can get your hands on because even though their bodies might be huge, it has to make it through this really tiny mouth. And of course, whenever I do these videos, I do a couple Google searches and I like Wikipedia's word for word description of them where it says, when a predator grabs a tomato frog in its mouth, the frog skin secretes a thick substance that numbs up the predator's eyes and mouth. This gummy substance contains a toxin that occasionally causes an allergic reaction that will not kill a human. The frog secretes it only when frightened. And this is common with a lot of frogs and toads where they secrete gummy thick substances out of their skin. And this is one of them, one of them in, in my time with him so far, he hasn't done that, but I also haven't really handled them at all. Uh, I guess that's kind of different from a crest. Okay, I'd rather handle this than a crested gecko, but my point is uh, they are a lot more sensitive to pretty much anything on their skin, like most amphibians, because your skin is gonna be oily and might irritate it. Same with like if you're on city tap water, the chlorine is most likely gonna be harmful. That's just in the water, which is safe for humans. It's just a little bit, at least as far as I can tell, I guess that could be a whole conspiracy in its own. Personally, I'm on well water that's also filtered without chlorine, so I can just use that with them. And pretty much anyone that already has a reptile or amphibian could probably set up an enclosure for a tomato frog. This is a very small container. I'd probably want to do a bit larger if it was permanent, but it's just some safe dirt some sphagnum moss, a couple of spots for them to hide and dig and moisture, and then you just throw in food and that's just about it. No specific lighting is needed. I mean, pretty much anything that's gonna be in like a Madagascan rainforest isn't <laughs> gonna get much lighting in general, but they probably just lay low and hang out on the substrate, so nothing like UVB is needed. I do think every animal should have a day and night cycle, unless they're like living deep in a cave and literally never get sunlight. But other than that, I think it's good to help them realize when it is daytime and nighttime. So this one in particular, 
is he was shipped to me from Washington to North Carolina. The previous owner had to move to Hawaii and couldn't bring a frog over like to Hawaii. I don't really know much about that, but yeah, they were able to send him over to me just on the other side of the country. And shipping has always been an interesting thing with reptiles and amphibians. And it looks like he actually did receive a little bit of damage on the way. On the top of his head, he has basically lost part of his pattern. And my guess is he was in a plastic cup. He was very well packaged and everything. He was in sphagnum moss and stuff. But I'm guessing what happened is he scraped himself on the plastic and it actually rubbed off about a layer of his skin. And thankfully amphibians are very good at healing themselves. Most likely they're gonna end up succumbing to like an actual infection or something if they do cut themselves. But if it's a sterile environment and they're able to heal themselves up, they do it pretty quickly and pretty well. So he does have that scar where it's just, it's kind of cool looking, missing the pattern. But I'd say most likely the pattern will come back pretty soon because they do shed like most other things. I guess every, does everything shed? I guess everything sheds one way or another. Frogs in particular, they just have this like slimy coat that comes off and they tend to eat it to recycle those nutrients. So overall, I really don't have any complaints. Like even me, who can be kind of critical, he doesn't take up much space. He doesn't make noise. He doesn't smell. He doesn't use up much resources, money, time, whatever. He just sits there and he's satisfied and that's enough for him. As long as he's safe and protected and gets the food and hydration he needs, he's pretty much going to be happy. I'd say really my biggest complaint is their availability because although people do breed them and breed a lot of other frogs and stuff, they just don't seem to be that easy to find, especially online. Because I'd say right now there's like five sites I think that are selling them, a few of which are out of stock, a few of others literally have like one or two in stock, but it also might be a seasonal thing because I think they breed or at least like lay eggs later in the year. So maybe there will be more available next year. But it's the kind of thing where I truly have no idea how to tell you where to find one. Because are any of you watching from Madagascar? Because aside from you, I guess the only way to find one would be seeking out expos, local shops, and just wherever you can to see if there's a tomato frog. There are other similar frogs like the chubby frog that I have and they are about the same. It's not too easy to find them, but they are also similar that if I wanted one of these, I could settle for a chubby frog. Like if I had neither and I wanted a chubby frog, yeah, I'd settle for a tomato frog and vice versa. It's kind of just a matter of what region it's going to be from and what color scheme it's going to have. And even though I was a bit mean to this frog in the beginning, it truly is very pretty. It's a lot prettier than anything I've found in like this area, at least. He's got like those orangey colors and a very strong black stripe. And I would actually say that this is the, oh, I'm going to be mean again, Again, the least attractive of the three subspecies because the others are like super bright red where they literally look like a tomato which I guess is why they're called tomato frogs. I can appreciate this naming because sometimes scientists or herpers whoever names them they're just so weird but tomato frog it's straightforward bright red tomato bright red got it pretty simple this one however is more of an orange, but he's still pretty. So that's it. I just wanted to show him. It's the only one I've ever gotten of them. And before this, I'd only ever seen pictures. I've never seen one in person. So it's a new experience, but the experience is kind of just him existing. It's not an animal I'm going to handle. He just kind of hangs out and sits there. But the nice thing is he doesn't burrow too much. So I do actually see him more often because he'll just be chilling under the cork and waiting for some food to magically fall from the sky. Yeah, but that's it. I have a handful of other frog videos if you want. Just something short and sweet to show you. That's it for this video. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.